Baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 Hey guys, this is Gary from My Psychology. So let's listen to some songs, shall we? Or this and this. They are very really annoying and I hated them. But I can't stop listening to them. Why? What did all these songs share in common other than being stupidly annoying? That is because they are all earworms. And today we are going to discuss them. Let's begin. These kinds of annoying but catchy songs that stuck in our head is what we call an earworm. It's when a snippet of that song or the whole song that keeps playing on and on in our mind, sometimes it's only a few hours, sometimes it can last for weeks. What usually triggers an earworm is when a word, a few notes of the song, or even an emotion reminds us of that song. Then it will start playing in our head over and over and over again. Baby Shark doesn't make any sense, but it's the worst kind of annoying song. The kind that just drill into your brain. But my little brother loved that song. Always singing it when we are video calling. So, whenever I think about my little brother, I will think of that Baby song. Or when I order seafood for dinner, I will have some fish filler in front of me. And all I can think of is... Mommy, shark, do, 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 do. Or you know, this... Beep, 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 beep. But why is there some songs are more likely to become earworms than other songs? This is interesting. Because it means that some songs are more earwormy and have something in them that makes them special or especially annoying. So let's take a look at the top three factors that make songs like Baby Shark more earwormy. It is super obvious that most of the songs that are categorized as earworms are usually first, faster in tempo. Second, have a very simple and easily remember melodies. But let's dive deeper. What kind of melodies are more sticky? Well, the ones with more global melody contours. In music theory, a note by itself doesn't have any meaning. But when multiple notes string together, then it's a melody. The way the melody rises and falls is the shape or contour of the melody. A global melodic contour is just a fancy way of saying that the melody is more commonly used in Western pop music. For example, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This song has one of the most common melodies used in Western music. A lot of other songs actually use the same melody, and we didn't know it because it's so commonly used. Melodies in Western pop music usually has a rising and falling quality. The first pitch rises, then the second falls. And repeat until you have a whole song. Use Call Me Maybe as an example. I can't believe that I'm using this song. Let's listen to the chorus. Then look at this graph and see how the chorus zigzags up and down in pitch. The same goes for Baby Shark. The song goes like this. Now you know the secret to write an annoyingly catchy melody. So what is next? Usually, Earworms has a very strange structure and has some very hooky but unexpected leaps in tempo. Again, call me maybe. In this song, there's these three quick notes. That's play and repeated throughout the whole song. The song is otherwise even tempo, a simple but effective rhythm. But it's these three notes that makes the song more memorable because it pushes the song forward. For Baby Shark, it's the odd stop start structure at the beginning. Notice how there's a dragging in the first words of every line. Baby, and then sudden jump into the These sort of odd tempos and rhythm in earworms can keep us on edge and makes the song more memorable. But this factor also heavily relies on our third factor, which is... A lot of people say that popular music sucks nowadays because every musician out there is writing songs like I really, 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 really like you or Better Man. And while it's true that songs today are more and more repetitive than 10 years ago, you can't say that there isn't any effort put into it because songs this catchy are too well designed to be incidental. Take for instance, the chorus of Bad Romance. There is a lot of R sounds, each perfectly placed to create a hooking effect, almost like you are under hypnosis. And by the end of the song, the entire chorus is stuck in your head after listening to so many variations of the R sound. Or use, I really like you. It is simple. 
because there's like six release in one single sentence. I think a lot of the hate towards repetition in music is that they seem lazy, stupid, easy to write because there are only some lines endlessly repeated to create a whole song. But I think that repetition is something that is musical. Music in itself should be repetitive. This can come down to a mere exposure effect. How we like something because we are exposed to it more often. In the case of Baby Shark or other earworms, we do not exactly like the song. But because they are programmed to be sticky and infectious in our mind, we can't do anything except to sing along with it or play in our head until we can't sleep. It's like a love-hate relationship between us and the song. There are none. Deal with it. Just saying, there are actually a few ways to get rid of earworms or maybe lessen the intensity. First, you can distract yourself by listening to or think about another song. Of course, you might instead become addicted to another earworm. But hey, you gotta stay positive. <coughs> Second, this might sound stupid, but it works. Identify the earworms currently playing in your head. Go to any source like YouTube or Spotify and listen to the song in full. Listening to the song in full can actually remove the looping of the earworms in our head. I think that Baby Shark, like any other earworm, is annoying. But I also think that it says something about our mind. Despite songs like this being obnoxious or repetitive and shallow, it can still tap into something within us, something not even our rational minds can ignore. Music, all forms of music, is something to be celebrated. Like in ancient times, when people write songs about heroes, or the gods or battles. And today, we write songs about the extended family of a baby shark. All of this is music. Primal, ritual, and also deeply human. And I can't help but like it. With you, my psychology. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. This video actually referenced two major studies done about earworms and musical repetitions. If you are interested to know more about this, we have put the link in the video description below. You can check that out when you are free. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more psychology videos. And see you in the next episode.